Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving a living sanctuary for you prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true Ooh, with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary tonight just lift your hands up to him I know you're in the comfort of your own home you may be in your bedroom you may be in your living room maybe in your basement you may be in your kitchen but whatever wherever you are watching this I am going to ask you to lift your hands to him and say Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary Pure and holy, tried and true. And my response is with thanksgiving. Though it may be hard, though it may get rough, though the storms may blow, I'm going to be a living, a living sanctuary for you. Come on, just lift your voice to him. Just lift your hands to him. You don't have to be loud. You don't have to get go over the top but if you just lift your hands in humility and bow your heads and say Lord I want to be a sanctuary Lord I want to be a sanctuary Lord I want to be a sanctuary I want to be a sanctuary for you I want to be a sanctuary for you a place where you dwell a place where you live a place where you abide. I want to be that for you, Jesus. I want to be that for you, Jesus. I want to be that for you, Jesus. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor tonight. For truly there is none like you in all the earth. From the rising of the sun to the going down the very same, Lord, your name is worthy to be praised and we magnify you Lord and we adore you we want to welcome all of our online sanctuary members tonight God bless you thank you so much for tuning in like I always say you could have been watching many other services but you are right here with us tonight and we appreciate you we love you we pray that God is blessing you listen if you did not tune in this morning 
I'm going to ask you after this, after this broadcast, after you watch the service tonight, that tune in, replay the morning service. I promise you, you're going to be blessed. Our pastor preached his heart out, I believe, this morning. And I believe that every word that was spoken, if we apply it to our lives, we will see the fruit thereof. And so go back, watch it if you haven't. If you did watch it or you were in attendance, make sure tomorrow night you watch it again. Because we know that the enemy is out and he wants to steal every word that the Lord plants in our hearts. Let's turn to Genesis chapter number one. And for those who are new, my name is Brother Mark. I'm one of the ministers here at APC. Thank you so much once again for tuning in. Remember to like, to share, and subscribe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter number one. And we're going to be reading from verse 26 to 28. Genesis chapter one, verses 26 to 28. And it says this, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. Verse 27 says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. And fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moveth on the earth. I want to give you the, the idea in which we are going to look at this evening. And it's really a mini series in which as the Lord will allow me to come before you. And we're going to be sticking within these three verses but I'd like to use for a series topic, the bearers of the image. Bearers of the image. And tonight will be part one and we'll actually be zoning into verse number 26. And really the first three words, then God said. And then part two, if the Lord allows us, we'll be looking at verse number 27, where it says, and God created. And then the third part, once again, Lord willing, verse 28, and God bless them. So tonight for part one of bearers of the image, I'd like to use for a subtopic, Check the track record. Check the track record. Just type that in the, in the chat. Check the track record. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies and your grace. We thank you for your goodness. Father, we pray that as we are in your house and as we are anticipating a word from you, I ask, Lord God Almighty, that you will have your way. Move by your power and by your strength. Let your anointing fall. I pray that it will go through every TV screen, every monitor, every phone, every device that it may be streaming from. For we know that you are not limited to one geographical location, but you are everywhere at one place active. So Lord, we pray. Have your way. Let your word take root in our lives, I pray. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I do want to read one more scripture. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. Isaiah chapter 55, verse number 11. And it says, so will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. Check the track record. When we talk about a track record, we're not talking about a timing in a race, but rather the definition of that phrase is the things that someone or something has done to achieve or achieved in the past, regarded especially as a way to judge what that person or thing is likely to do in the future. So it's looking at the past. It's looking at what was done in the past and judging what will happen in the future. The truth is, if you hang around certain people for a certain amount of time, you will eventually know the patterns of who they are. If you watch a sport long enough, you will eventually learn the pattern of a team or a player. It's about studying the patterns of these individuals. And as long as they are around or as long as you are watching them, eventually they will show you patterns of who they are. If you sit down and study yourself, you too will see that you have a track record or a pattern of doing things. If we were to be honest with our track record, when it comes to our Christian walk, we, we may even profess that we are not the best at walking this Christian life. That there are things that arise in our lives that tend to throw us off track and no matter how much times we try to beat the system, we, we end up sometimes falling in the same trap over and over again where now it becomes a pattern. If we were to be honest with ourselves, a matter of fact, we can take the words or promises that we say. There were times when we spoke in things to someone and had to go back on our words Maybe due to circumstances or maybe we just out flatted lied to the person. But even our words have track records that we like to make promises. We, we like to make commitments and sometimes it doesn't fall through. And if that happens enough times, people then will not take you at your word because they look at your track record and they realize that every time I spoke something, I always had to take it back. Everyone has a track record. But I want you to know one thing, that when God speaks, things happen all the time. That when God speaks a word, I want you to understand this, when God speaks a word, whatever he speaks has to come to pass. He can't take back his word. He can't take back what he has said. He can't take back that which has come out of his mouth. When God speaks, things happen. Can you type that in the chat? When God speaks, things happen. When God speaks, things happen all the time. In Isaiah chapter 55, verses number 11, we, we read it, and there are three things about God when he speaks a word. Number one, when God speaks a word, it doesn't come back empty. The word empty there in the Hebrew is translated as empty-handed or unsatisfied. In other words, when God speaks a word, it does not come back without evidence or does not come back without satisfying him. So whenever God opens his mouth, whenever God speaks a word, whenever God declares a thing, it 
does not come back onto him empty hand. In other words, it does not come back to him and say, I was not able to accomplish what you sent me out to do. Number two, when God speaks, it accomplishes whatever he desires. It accomplishes whatever he desires. In other words, the Hebrew translation means to do or to make or to accomplish or to complete. This word conveys the central notion of performing an activity with a distinct purpose and moral obligation or a goal in view. In other words, when God speaks, he speaks with purpose. When God speaks, he speaks uh, with purpose. When he speaks, uh, there's a reason why he is talking. When he speaks, there's a reason why he is declaring. When he talks, uh, there's, a re- there's a purpose behind everything uh, that God does. And what God says. The third thing about when God speaks, it always succeeds. It always succeeds. The verb means to prosper, to succeed, to be victorious. It is used for causing something to turn out successful. Can can, can I say this? That if God, though he cannot make a mistake, though God cannot speak something by accident, though God cannot err in any of his ways, but if God were to ever, ever make a mistake out of his mouth and say something to you that will bless you or that will tear you down or that will cause you to run away. God, watch this. God cannot take it back, but it has to fulfill whatever it was sent to do. It has to be successful in its going out. So if God could ever make a mistake uh, and say, I'm going to bless you beyond measure. Uh, If God saw what he said, uh, he couldn't grab his word back. Uh, His word has to accomplish uh, what it is that he said. Uh, So if you're in the miry clay and you're sinking uh, and God is sitting on his throne uh, and he earths out of his mouth, uh, you're going to survive. Uh, He cannot take that word back, uh, but that word must accomplish what whatever it was sent out to do. Not only that, but it must be successful. It must be victorious. God only speaks words of victory victorious endings. Uh, I know my thoughts and my plans for you, say it the Lord, uh, to prosper you and to give you an expected end. Why? Uh, because whatever woo, whatever God thinks, uh, it comes to pass. Uh, in the beginning was the word uh, and the word was with God and the word uh, was God. Uh, verse 14, and the word uh, became flesh, that very thought of God put on flesh and it had to accomplish everything that it was sent out to do. Brothers and sisters, God, when he speaks, his words cannot come back onto him empty. His words must accomplish whatever he desires and it always succeeds I'm so glad because our Lord God is a king and Ecclesiastes chapter 4 8 verse 4 Ecclesiastes verse 8 chapter 8 verse 4 says since the word of the king is authoritative who will say to him what are you doing and so because God is my king whenever he speaks a word no one can question what it is that he is doing Because he is king of the earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. They and the people and the world therein. Brothers and sisters, when God speaks, nobody can tell him or ask him, why are you doing what you're doing? It's because he sits as king over everything. My God has the power to speak life in a dead situation. Our God has power power uh, to speak to a rock uh, and it brings out water. Uh, My God has power uh, to speak to the sky uh, and manna falls from heaven. Uh, I'm talking about the word of God. Uh, A matter of fact, uh, Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 says it best. uh, Man shall not live uh, by bread alone, uh, but by 
every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Do you want to know how you're going to live in today's time? You're going to have to get a word from God. You want to know how you're going to survive this time? You're going to have to get a word from God because God's word cannot come back to him empty. God's word must accomplish whatever he desires. God's word must come back successful. I'm talking about a God that is able. Though the doctors say that you have only a couple of days to live, I dare you to turn your back to the wall like Hezekiah and say, Lord, remember me. All you need is a word. All you need is a word and he will bring you out. All you need is a word and he will turn it around. All you need is a word. Don't give me a sentence. Don't don't give me a paragraph just give me a word and I know if you speak it it must come to pass Lord I'm sinking I'm drowning but if you speak a word if you say wake up if you say get up if you say you're not drowning I know your word will come to pass we need to stay in the word Woo, brothers and sisters it has to succeed whenever it comes out of the mouth of God. I don't care what they told you. I don't care what they declared. I don't care what they pronounced over you. If God did not say it, you still have time to reverse it. God send a word. I need you to send a word. I need you to send a word. I need you to send a word. Because I realize that as long as I live on this earth, as long as I have breath in this body, I'm going to need your word to carry me through. I'm going to need your word to hold me together. I'm going to need your word to bring me through this. So if you speak a word, Jairus, his daughter was dying. But all Jesus had to do was speak a word and her daughter was healed. All you need is a word from the Lord. Brothers and sisters, check the track record. Because when you understand the God that we serve, when you understand the God that we worship, you will then understand that the words that come out of his mouth is going to take you out uh, of whatever you're in uh, but you gotta check uh the track record. You got to check the track record. Mark, I won't be able to promise you everything. And I may even fail a lot of the times. But I know a God that is able to keep you from falling and present your faultless before the presence of his glory. Why? Because by the power of his word, you have to check the track record. Genesis 1 verse 3 God said let there be light and there was light check the track record in Genesis 1 6 and 7 God said let the firmament in the midst of the water and let it divide from the waters from the waters verse 7 and God made the firmament and it was divided you gotta check the track record in verse number 11 God said let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed in verse 12 at the end and God saw it and it was good check the track record whatever God spoke it came to pass Woo, brothers and sisters, you got to check the track record in Genesis chapter 6 verse 13. God said to Noah, the end of all earth is come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold, I will destroy them 
from the earth in chapter 7 verse 17 was the fulfillment and the flood was 40 days upon the earth and the waters increase you gotta check the track record in Genesis 18 verse 10 God told Abraham that you are going to have a son in your old age and then in chapter 21 of Genesis there it was God said that Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time which God has spoken. You gotta check the track record. Brothers and sisters, in Genesis chapter number 15, God told Abraham that your descendants are going to be put into captivity for 400 plus years in Exodus chapter 12 verse 40. Now the time that the sons of Israel lived in Egypt was 430 years. You got to check the track record, brothers and sisters. First Samuel chapter 30, verse number eight, David's praying and saying, Lord, should I pursue? Should I go after? Should I recover? Can I recover all? And then God responds back with an answer. You shall recover all. And in verse 18 of that chapter, David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken. You got to check the track record. When God speaks, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Brothers and sisters, the promised Messiah, Isaiah 9 verse 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government will rest on his shoulder, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, this was a prophecy from God. God spoke to Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 that the Messiah would be called Emmanuel meaning God with us and it was fulfilled in Matthew chapter 1 verses 22 and 23 you gotta check the track record God spoke through the prophet Isaiah saying the Messiah will be both the branch out of Jesse and the root out of Jesse and it was fulfilled in Matthew chapter 1 verse 6 physically and spiritually he was the source of their life you gotta check the track record the Bible says in, in Isaiah 35 verse 4 through 6 said that my God God said I will come and save you I, I will come and save you how would you know I will open the eyes of the blind the deaf ears will be unstopped the dumb will talk the lame will leap and it was fulfilled with Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 7 verse 22 he assumed that scripture to himself and we know what Jesus did the blind uh, begun to see uh, the lame uh, began to walk uh, the dumb uh, began to talk uh, brothers and sisters uh, I'm here to tell you uh, if you check God's uh, track record uh, he's always uh, kept his word uh, and God said uh, let's make man uh, in our image uh, verse 27 uh, and he created them uh, male and female uh, check the track record Ooh. he won't go back uh, 
on his word. If he says he's blessing you, he's going to bless you. If he says you're successful, you're going to be successful. If he told you that it's going to work out, it's going to work out. Image bearers, understand that God's word cannot come up void. But it must accomplish everything that it was sent out to do. In order to be bearers of the image, we have to understand. We have to understand that the God that we serve, when he speaks, it will always come to pass. Numbers chapter 23 Verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. As he said, and will he not do it? Or as he spoken, and will he not make it good? When God speaks, things happen. When you hear God speak, he will make it happen. But Brother Mark, I've never heard the voice of God before. I've never heard him whisper my name. I never heard him audibly in my ears. I I don't know if he sounds deep or if his voice is light. I I don't know. And I'm glad you're asking that and saying that even as you're watching tonight. I want you to know that you don't have to wait till you audibly hear God. All you have to do is open the word of God. And he has spoken a lot. All you have to do is see the pages of promises in these 66 books in which he has written and you will hear God speaking to you that you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. That you are blessed and not cursed. If, if you just open the word, you will hear and speak to you that you are the lender and not the borrower. If you just open up the word of God, you, you, you will hear him speak to you that, that you are a, a royal priesthood, a, a chosen generation, a peculiar people. If you open the word, you, you will hear him say to you that you are the apple of my eye. If, if you just open the word, you will start hearing what he's saying that I am your shepherd and you shall not want it. If you just open the word, you you will hear him say I love you. Because when God speaks things have to happen. But in order for us to see God move in the way he wants we have to believe in what he says to us. For God is not a man that he shall lie. Check the track record. Check the track record. David, you're not building me a house, but your son is going to. And Solomon built the house. Jeremiah, the children of Israel, will be going into captivity for 70 years. They went into captivity. Peter, you're going to deny me thrice. Before the crow crocs. And he did. But you know the one that I love the most. See, th- this, is, this is a word that I love because he... Remember, God speaks, and whatever he speaks, it comes to pass. It it has to accomplish whatever it was sent out to do. St. John chapter 14, starting at verse 1. Don't, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Oh, I love this. In my father's house, 
Woo! There are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you why. Because I'm not a man that I should lie. I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. That though this promise, this word have not yet been fulfilled, but when I look at God's track record, when I look at the fact that every time he says something, it always comes to pass. That means I could hope in God's word and know even though he has not come yet, there is a day where he's going to make his appearance. Even though he has not shown up yet, I can know for a fact that he is coming again. When I check the track record, my God has never, whoo, God, he has never lied. That's why I can rejoice in the book of Revelation where it says there's heaven, where there'll be no weeping, there'll be no pain, there'll be no sickness. I can rejoice because I know God will not go back on his word. I can rejoice knowing that better days are coming. I can rejoice knowing that I shall see him. Amen. I can rejoice knowing that though weeping may endure for a night, joy comes in the morning. I can rejoice knowing that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. I can rejoice knowing I can rejoice knowing that he is my helper and my strength. I can rejoice knowing that there is nothing that can befall me. I can rejoice knowing that he's given me power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. I can rejoice knowing that the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. I can rejoice. I can rejoice. I can rejoice because when God speaks, it must come to pass. If God speaks, it must come to pass. If God said it, that settles it. Amen. Type that in the chat. When God says it, that settles it. Amen. The devil can't reverse it. People can't deny it. If he blesses me, I'm blessed because I take him at his word. Check the track record and you will see that every time God spoke, his word was always fulfilled. It is time for us to take God at his word. Because if we don't, we are going to lose out on what he has for us. He's our king. And if a king speaks, if a king speaks, his word has authority. And who could tell him what is he doing? This is the God that we serve. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I can tell you the honest truth, this is my testimony. There was one time, and I don't know if I was doing this because I wanted to prove God, but I knew there was one time I was really hungry. But the Kirk, I was hungry. I was just in my bedroom. There's food downstairs. We weren't lacking. There, there, was, there, there was food downstairs, Brother Stefan. There was food. I could go down and eat. But I literally laid in my bed 
And I repeated this verse over and over again. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And I literally said to God, I took up my Bible, I took up my notebooks, I took up my commentaries, I took up my pencil and my pen, and I said, Lord, I want to I wanna see this happen. I, you know I'm hungry. But instead of eating, I'm going to study your word and I'm going to believe that you are going to fill me. And I tell you no lie. As I begun to study God's word, my stomach stopped hurting me. As I begun to go into God's word, I felt more stronger. As I began to write down those notes, God began to minister to me. Because man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Even the words I don't like, even the words that challenge me to change, even that word that says you got to change your mindset on that. Every word is what he uses so that I can live. Remember one time we were, at, we, we were in a predicament where we needed, we needed some food in the house. Now this, this time we needed food in the house. And I remember the scripture God said, you know, Lord, you are my shepherd. I shall not want you. You will supply all my needs. And, and God, we need some groceries. Please. And I remember going to the car and I'm praising God. We, Lord, we need some food. Money wasn't, m- money was funny. Pocket was tight. Rode up into the church parking lot. Parked the car. Saying, God, I don't know how you're going to do this behind I, I'm taking out your word that you will supply all of our needs. Brother Chris, I literally opened the driver's door, put one foot out. A mother of the church drove over and parked her car. Took my other foot out the car. Closed the door. About to walk into the building. She said, wait, pastor, hold on one second. Brother Mark, wait one second. I said, yes, how can I help you? I got, I got some things for you in the trunk. I said, all right, cool. Um, all right, let's do this now. So after church, we just, you know, it's fine. And she went to her car trunk and pulled out four bags of groceries and said, here, I just feel like you needed this. Why? Because when God speaks, when God speaks, he also fulfills. He also fulfills. There's so much. I, I could tell you when, when I, I didn't have gas money. And I'm saying, God, listen. Ah, I, 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 need, I need some money, Lord. I really do. I, like, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never said that. I'm going to be honest with everyone, well, everyone who's in here too. There were times when I didn't have gas money and I had to call into work and say, I'm not feeling well. To wait till the Friday come to get paid. So it's mostly Thursdays I'll be sick because I realized I, I ain't going to get gas to go there and to come back. For some reason, God keeps giving me jobs that were very far from my house. Even now, I live in Oshawa and I work in Vaughan. And if, he's, and if he opens up this other door, he'll even be further. But I remember asking him, I said, Lord, listen, I, I need gas. I, and I remember I went to church. And I was worshiping God. And I was saying, Lord, I thank you. I praise you. And I'm saying, Lord, I need gas, though. Like, honestly, truly, like, like this, 
like the fact that I came to church, I'm afraid I'm going to go back on fumes. All right. And I don't want to ask nobody for money. So I'm going to need you to help me out. You will supply all my needs. And after service, someone came to me. I said, praise the Lord, Brother Mark. Shook my hand and there was a white envelope left back. I opened it. It wasn't a birthday card. It was cash. I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. When we take God at his word, he will fulfill whatever he has spoken. He will fulfill whatever he has spoken. Last one, and we're closing. Remember, I prayed. Now saying, Lord, I, I want to do more for you. I want to I wanna do more. I want to be more. Brother Stefan, he, he brought me to Corinthians to where Paul was talking about ministry. And I said, all right. And I started studying ministry and studying how ministry works and how Paul did what he did. And I'm like, oh, God, this is, this is good. You know, you, it feels like you're preparing me. I, I feel good. And no word of a lie. About two to three weeks after, this is when I was going to Pastor Todd's church. Pastor Todd came to me and said, hey, we want you to be a Sunday school teacher. I said, wow, that's, that's fast. I just prayed and here comes ministry. Because if you know me, I don't ask for ministries. Unless I really feel the call to do so. But then after that, like three weeks after that, I was called into the office and they said, Brother Mark, we want to send you to BC to do a mission trip to help Pastor Walters. All because I took God at his word. And he supplied all our needs, all my needs. I don't know where you are today in your life or what it is that you're doing, but I want you to know if you take God at his word, He will fulfill everything that he speaks to you. I don't care what the doctor said to you. If God has not spoken to that situation yet, it's time to turn your face to the wall and say, Lord, I need a word from you. If God said your business is going to be successful, then your business is going to be successful. If he says your career is going to take off, that means your career is going to take off. Though the vision tarry, it will still come to pass. Take him at his word. Why? Because he has a perfect track record. He has a perfect track record. When God speaks, things happen. The bearers of the image know that when their king speaks, things have to happen. When he speaks into your spirit, you know something has to happen. When he speaks into your body, you know something has to happen. When he speaks into your life, you know something is about to happen. Because his track record is perfect. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your love and your mercies. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you because your word will not come back to you void. It will accomplish. It will succeed. Lord, I pray that every individual that needs a word from you, that you will speak it and that they will receive it. And that Lord God, that word will be manifested before their eyes. Yes, God. I pray from this point on, Lord, whenever we hear a word spoken to us, whether it's from our pastor 
or from a minister or from a visiting minister, I pray that every word that is spoken, that we will take it, bring it into our hearts and allow it to take root and to grow. Because whatever you speak, you always fulfill. Have your way, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Help us, teach us to be lovers of your word. Even when we don't feel like praying and we don't feel like reading, help us to pick up the Bible and to read. Even if we don't understand what it's saying, help us just to read and to grab hold of your promises. I pray for the person right now that's watching, that's having low self-esteem in their image. They feel like they are not pretty. They feel like they're ugly. They've been told that they will be a nobody. I pray that your word will pop out to them, dear God, that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. And their soul, who they really are, knows. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let your word wrap around them. I pray, Lord, for the one that is starting the business or the one that is already in the business but it's not going anywhere. I pray that you will speak a word so that they may see it turn around for profit. That dream, that vision that is inside of them. Speak a word into them, Lord, of life. Show them strategies. In the name of Jesus Christ. For Lord, if you can create the earth out of chaos and we are in your image, that means whatever chaos we are in, we have the ability to also create. Teach us how to be more like you. Lord, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. On behalf of Pastor Castro, the ministers, and the saints here at APC, God bless you. See you on Wednesday night. Please come on out, but also Adult Sunday School. Make sure you join Adult Sunday School this Tuesday at 6 p.m. Uh, we are going through a great discussion on the revelations of Christ, uh, of God. Listen, it is an awesome, awesome time. But the David has just, I think, wrapped up the I am's and we're going to do more, more things. And we want you to be a part of it. So please look on our website at apcpickering.com and you will find the link there for Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. And then come over back again on Wednesday as we continue with the blueprint, the tabernacle of Moses in Jesus name. God bless you. We love you. In Jesus' name. We hope you enjoyed our Sunday worship service. If you were blessed by the service, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more APC content. We are also thankful for our partners. Your continued financial support allows us to continue producing and posting new content every week. If you would like to partner and support the work of APC, please visit apcpickering.com give and give generously today. If you have a prayer request or any questions about the Bible, we'd love to hear from you. Visit apcpickering.com contact and chat with us anytime. Take care and God bless.